walked in with web comics. Come on, Dave, you can do it. Uh, well, I can do it with uh, with some help. Uh, I think we're probably going to keep doing the uh, the COVID nineteen uh, strips. Uh, any any word from you on that? Have you heard from uh, the third one? Is we're starting the ball rolling. They're hoping to get it done by next Wednesday again. Okay. Uh, it's it's yeah, gonna be. A, I don't know if that's sustainable. It's, but <laughs> I, when Monday rolled around, I went, "Come on, Dave. You know how to do this. It's service in hell." And uh, as usually happens, I do yeah, I do two strips, uh, typing them out, getting ready to base them up, and as soon as I'm done typing them, I've got the third one. And then I've got the fourth one, and then I've got the fifth one. So, so how are we doing on next Wednesday's COVID nineteen um, free comic? Okay, the the cover parody is a cover parody of Superman versus Muhammad Ali, Super Service versus either coronavirus or COVID nineteen. I have to fight with David Birdsong later on tonight about that. I say COVID nineteen because it sounds lyrically more like Muhammad Ali. Uh, Sean's got a couple strip ideas he's got to type up. David's got a bunch, I think, done. Uh, in the first free comic, Dr. Varkhanton shrunk down to microscopic size and invaded the virus, and that gave me an idea for, we could pick up on that idea in the third one, which, because, uh, DC published Doomsday Clock, which is a... Jeff Johns written, and I think Gary Frank was the artist, sequel to Watchmen that brings the Watchmen characters, some of them, into the DC universe. So Superman shows up. Right. And right. and Dr. Manhattan, the last thing he can see in the future is that he confronts Superman and then he, everything goes black and he doesn't know what's going on. And as the story progresses, you know, Superman meets Dr. Manhattan. So, of course, I'm going, well, wait a minute. We have Dr. Varkhattan. We have Super Service. It's the Super Service versus COVID-19 issue. We got to do a parody of Doomsday Clock. And the the last time we saw Dr. Varkhattan, he was infected with uh, mad cow disease, so he kept saying moo. So the parody in my head is Doomsday C asterisk CK. Okay. And All I... Right. I sent it to the fellas, and they thought it was hilarious, but we might have too many strips. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's a problem that I think uh, we can count as a blessing. That, uh, it, it, to whatever extent, there are people who want to laugh in the middle of this. Uh, we're, we're pretty much their one-stop shopping center, I think, at this point. But uh, we will see. Yeah, I don't see I don't see us doing a fourth free issue in a fourth week. I I think at that point it's going to be stick figures and and all the captions are going to be us crying. <laughs> well, you you surprise yourself. The thing is, when you're under the gun and you're producing like this, uh, you go, "That's it for me." Like I'm I'm just completely drained out of out of all of this. But. Uh, Give it a couple of days and you find out now the unconscious mind uh, is working overtime once you get it fired up in those directions. Like, I'm amazed with Benjamin Hobbs, that uh, the guy who was hard pressed to do one comic book a year is the one who goes, Come on, we're going to do a comic book every week. What, <laughs> like, what do you mean, we, pale face? Well, that was when he said, I think we can get it done for this week, and I. I... I wanted to send an email. I was about to send an email saying we should wait, make it every two weeks. That gives us a little cushion. We can edit. We can fax to Dave. We can get revisions. And before I could send the email, two other guys chimed in with, oh, yeah, we can definitely get this done by Wednesday. I'm like, hey, you guys are the ones doing the heavy lifting. I'm just going, make it funny. Right, right. I, uh, this, uh, I made the point to Benjamin uh, don't get stuck on the idea of doing 24 pages a week. Uh, stick with doing a new issue a week. If you've got uh, uh, five home run strips that are really, really funny, and that's all that we come up with, well, okay, it's a, uh, a five-page issue a week. <laughs> count, count 
count your blessings. How many else? Are, how many other people are giving you a weekly comic book um, during during this mass? Um, but uh, of course, as soon as I said that to him, then he faxed through five home runs, and it's like, well, okay, maybe that was just me invoking it that, that made it happen. And now I feel like, well, come on, I got to do five five pages of strips. Before you know it, we're back up to twenty four pages a week. Well, that's uh, today at work. I was thinking about it, and I came up with an ending for Doomsday, and blank, and and the idea is Doctor Varkhatten absorbs all the coronavirus in the infernal realms and infects one person, and it resets the universe. And the next page is the recreation of uh, page one of issue one of service that you and Gerhard did only service's head has been replaced with the coronavirus and it's coronabus the sarsvark there you go and I'm, I'm, and I'm like oh I gotta type it up and fax it to or email it to the guys and I'm like they're either gonna think it's genius and we have to do this or they're gonna kill me uh or it ends up being the actual 300 issue reboot of service everybody's been waiting for only now he's an infectious disease Cerebus and Hell Comics. Uh, we do have confirmation from Diamond that uh, Green Dante, Green Virgil did arrive um, at Diamond, which was, there was a question about that, whether uh, that was far enough along in the pipeline to go to Plattsburgh or uh, was going to get turned back at the border and then have to be stored at Marquee Printing. But uh, no, it did, it did ship it is at Diamond, and of course, at that point, I heard from Diamond, uh, we're not paying for anything more than we paid for already because we're not getting paid. So it's like, okay, they've got uh, three gun, Green Dante, Green Virgil there. Um, presumably, there are still stores open. Like, as far as I know, uh, I don't know if it's still a 30-20 split on U.S. states of 20 states going... Uh, this is just complete BS. We're not closing our state down. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep keep everything open. Uh, I know Sweden's doing that. Sweden has stayed open, uh, although most other European countries aren't. Um, so they've got uh, Barking Dead, and Barking Dead went to the stores in the states that were open and was sold there. Whether that happens with Green Dante, Green Virgil, uh, I don't know. Um, if the whole works gets shut down, at some point Diamond goes, this is it, it's now a federal thing. Uh, we can't ship to any stores anywhere from any of our warehouses. Uh, at that point, I think we're into a blank spot where, because comic books don't exist in the direct market, and uh, we're not able to print at Marquee, and we're not able to ship, I think we'll probably just move the dates forward, which would be, uh, I can't say that that would break my heart, because it would mean that I would be getting my lead time back. Uh, right now, I've got uh, the April 2021 issue done, and David Birdsong has actually caught up with me uh, doing the strip. So, um, Baby Yoda Cerebus number one, which is the April 2021 title, at that point would get moved forward and be the May issue, and I would be a year and a month ahead. And then if this goes on for another month, that would become the June uh, 2021 issue. Uh, and that's really all, uh, all we can do is just 
the, the last I had heard from Diamond was they were shutting everything down and they weren't shipping to stores as of April. As of April. Okay. Yeah. Well, in that case, uh, I think however long that goes for, uh, we'll just bump the cover date on Cerebus and Health. Getting back to uh, Margaret's question of uh, uh, what's AV's plan for the distribution of Cerebus and Health. Uh, AV's plan is Diamond's plan. Whatever Diamond is doing, that's what AV is doing. But uh, that's that's really the, the situation that we're that we're sitting in right now. And I did want to interrupt myself here to say uh, Alfonso at uh, Studio Comics Press got permission from uh, the Frederick Street Mall to go into his shop. Uh, like he can't open it as a shop, but he can let himself in as it's the printing place. And printed the front labels for Service Archive number eight. So uh, Rolly went and picked those up and brought them back. And I signed them out back at Camp David. And uh, Rolly has taken them home where he has all of the Service Archive number eight portfolios uh, already with their green labels on them and all of the contents inside. And next stage will be actually packaging them and then finding out is it possible for packaging two in Waterloo, who transports all of the, uh, the U.S. copies across the border to a, uh, an individual ship site where uh, it goes across as one shipment and then gets broken down into the individual uh, mailers. Uh, are they able to do that? Is that part of the, uh, the border protocols between Canada and the U.S. right now? And um, uh, that's that's where that stands. So very very interesting to me that uh, Alfonso had to get permission to go into Studio Comics Press even just to do printing. It seems to me that that's one of those. Uh, private property situations where, as long as he's current with his rent, uh, he should be able to be in there doing whatever he wants. He's not going to infect anybody if uh, if, he, if he's just in there doing some printing. But uh, these are all questions up ahead for uh, the uh, what I call the Beijing versus Washington people. We don't want to turn into Beijing. And we don't want to turn North America into communist China, although some of us do. Uh, and those are those are the borderline areas that I think are are critical and, and need to be watched very very carefully. Uh, okay, moving on to John Glisman. Please ask Dave if he's ever seen Devil's Tower in Wyoming. It looks just like the tower that delivered Cerebus to the moon so he could get the bad news from the judge. He says, last summer my wife and I traveled around the U.S. and visited a place called Devil's Tower in Wyoming. As a Cerebus fan, that tower looked very familiar. Apparently it was considered a mystical, holy place by Native Americans back in the day. I've never seen any indication throughout the years that Dave has seen this place. Just wondering, question mark. Uh, the first picture is the tower, and the second picture is a close-up of the tower's face of a rock formation that actually looks like a skull, which indeed it does. Um, yeah, that was uh, definitely not something that I had in mind with uh, uh, the tower that the upper city of the EF is on, uh, but it sure is shooting looks like it in the photograph. Is the, uh, the Devil's Tower in Wyoming, is that the same thing in um, Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Do you yeah. know offhand? Yes. It is? Yes. It is. Okay. All right. Because I think I saw Close Encounters of the Third Kind and went, uh, this is starting to seem weirdly resonant, resonant with my comic book. Uh, back in the back in the day where weird resonances with my comic book weren't, uh, weren't the norm, uh, weren't the exception rather
other than the 